What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm at my new studio in Sedalia, Colorado, and today I wanted to start a series on microscopy and mycology. So this is going to be a very basic to more advanced playlist. So if you're interested in learning about microscopes, check out our playlist, Microscopy and Mycology. A little background about myself. So I am a certified med tech and about five years ago I quit the corporate world and I started my own mushroom farm. So if you want to learn more about that, I have hundreds of videos on my YouTube. Go back and watch the story of our farm and how I started. But this is a picture of me about 10 years ago at a hospital in Buffalo. I was doing karyotyping and it was very intensive microscopy work. So I have a pretty good understanding of how microscopes work. As a med tech, I did take a lot of microbiology and clinical mycology formal education. So that's kind of my background and where I'm coming from. Uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below but I will move forward with today's topic, which is two types of microscopes for mycology. So if you look, I have one of these tan microscopes to my right and to my left, I have a blue and white amscope. So if you're interested, I did post the link to this amscope in the description. I could put a link right up here at the top of the video. This is probably, the most basic microscope that I would suggest using for mycology. Um, it's an amscope, so think of it as the, the Honda Civic of microscopes. It's very durable, it's going to do the job. It's not the fanciest microscope out there, but it's very affordable. And this stereoscope I borrowed from my friend Zach. Uh, I'm not really sure what the brand is on here, but it's a very heavy duty, it's a, a good quality microscope, and I'll just talk about the differences between these two microscopes today. In front of me, we have a compound light microscope. So this is the blue and white amscope to my left. This is a compound light microscope as opposed to a stereo light microscope on my right. One thing that you can kind of think about when you're selecting what microscope you're going to be using is what is the sample and what is the target observation that you are going to be doing with that sample. So a compound microscope is more of a laser focused. It's going to be in a small field of view, very high resolution, as opposed to the stereo microscope, which you can think of that as like a spotlight as opposed to a laser. So it's going to give you a really wide range of view. It's not going to have as high of a resolution as a compound microscope, but there's applications for both in mycology. The compound microscope is going to have a really high resolution, and that is the feature of the compound light microscope. It compounds the magnification all the way from the top ocular to the objective lens. And this one is really cool. You can switch back between different magnifications. So you're going to get a more or less precise and wider or narrower range of view with the compound light microscope. So the stereoscope, on the other hand, it only has this one ocular lens and then you can adjust the the fine or coarse adjustments by using this arm that's connected to the microscope. So I think that this one does have different lenses that you can swap out for different magnifications, but in general, a stereo microscope is going to be basically calibrated for that whole range of view. So common reasons why you would use a compound over a stereoscope. So compound microscopes can observe 
features within a cell. So if you're looking for the nucleus or if you're looking for clamp connections or other cell features, you can use a dye and then you can use the, the light to reflect through that cell and then you're going to be able to observe really fine details of different cells. It's really useful if you're trying to measure spores, um, if you're trying to identify uh, unknown species using their spores. This is the mi microscope you're gonna wanna use just because the stereoscope won't have that high of a resolution. So you won't be able to see different features like the spore cell wall thickness, even the size of the cells is going to be less accurate with a stereoscope. So one of the, the requirements of the compound light microscope is that you have to use a glass slide. I have an example of some concave slides here. You can buy um, just regular standard glass slides that are flat. And the reason is that you need the light to penetrate through the sample in order to observe those features because it's magnifying so small the light that is passing through into the objective into your ocular and into your eye is so small that you have to use a glass slide it's really important to get the proper slides for your sample we can talk about that in a later video but as opposed to the stereoscope which you can use just a petri dish um, you can even use an auger plate and this one in particular has a glass window that can be replaced so you can put this solid window on the stage to block out light it's a really nice feature with this microscope in particular that you can see through a clear petri dish like this the stage is set up to perfectly hold one of these petri dishes so that if you're using it to do some tissue work, or if you know you have living organisms in there, it's not gonna jostle around. Um, so that is kind of the difference in the stages and in the, the types of sample prep that you have to do. A stereoscope is much more diverse. You can just place a, a leaf or a mushroom or you know a mushroom gill directly on this glass surface, and you'll still be able to observe it where the compound mic microscope has a hole in the stage, so you have to have a slide. So that's a really important distinction between these two microscopes. I hope that makes sense. I think I talked about kind of the differences between both of these scopes. I'll dive more into the compound microscope just because this one's a little bit more delicate and trickier to work with. The stereo microscope, you know, it has its place in mycology, especially if you're doing field work or breeding. So don't write it off. Some of the newer ones today have really, really nice cameras. So you can get a really good resolution. It's not going to be as good as a compound, but it's going to be able to, you know, get really nice pictures and you'll be able to observe a lot of different features than maybe this older model here. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed that breakdown of two different microscopes in mycology. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Um, check out our playlist, Microscopy for Mycology. Until next time, much love.